Welcome to Tokyo Wave, recorded in a live studio in Harajuku, Japan, with your hosts, Aaron and Parker. All right, everyone, welcome to episode 53 of Tokyo Wave. We are your hosts, Aaron Randall and Parker Allen. On Tokyo Wave, we bring you weekly updates from our studio in Harajuku. Join us in segments featuring this week's top news, political happenings, business, and other random garbage. To get us started, here are this week's top news highlights. Japanese government set to decide to release Fukushima wastewater into sea, despite opposition. Fuji Media and 600 broadcasters subject to foreign ownership probe. Deliveries of Japanese beer brewing giant Asahi's new mug cans halted over huge demand. This week in Japan. All right, so our first story. Japanese government set to decide to release Fukushima wastewater into deep sea despite opposition. The Mainichi has reported that the Japanese government is preparing to decide to release treated radioactive wastewater accumulating at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station into the sea, overriding opposition from the fishing industry. It's been treated. It's no problem to put it into the water. Forget about it. The decision to release the wastewater is expected to be made in the near future at a meeting of cabinet members who are handling measures relating to the decommissioning of the plant and treatment of radioactive wastewater. The cabinet is presided over by Chief Cabinet Secretary Katsunobu Kato. That sounds like the kind of meeting that you have to wear rubber gloves to. (laughs) By the way, we brought the waste here to look at it close up. Uh, I think I might have the coronavirus, so see you in two weeks. <laughs> so on April 7th, Prime Minister Suga commented that he wanted to decide on the disposal method for the contaminated water accumulating at the plant in a few days. His comment followed a meeting with Hiroshi Kishi, president of JF Zengyodam, a nationwide federation of Japanese fisheries cooperatives at the Prime Minister's office. Kishi told reporters that Suga had asked for understanding on the release of the water, saying dealing with it was an unavoidable issue. In response, he said he informed Suga that there was no change in the least to the organization's stance opposing the release of the wastewater into the sea. Yeah, if I was the top dog for a fisheries cooperative, I think I would be pretty opposed to nuclear wastewater into the sea, too. Mm, 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 mm. We should put some, like, Spongebob jokes in there somewhere, right? They should, all the uh, cool kids are doing. They should use Spongebob as the mascot for the whole program. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to sing that song, but... <laughs> I can't hear you. (laughs) It's got to be what Squidward, the guy who's always depressed, you know, like all the signs that talk about like them dumping and when they have, you know, they have to alert when they're going to dump. And it's just just a picture of Squidward with his hands up saying it can't be helped. (laughs) (laughs) He just has this frown on his face. (laughs) I think we just made a meme. Yeah, yeah. So disposal of the wastewater, which is being stored temporarily in tanks, has long been a concern in work to decommission the nuclear plant, which was hit by three meltdowns in the wake of the March 2011 Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami disaster. You know, we just talked about this with David Wagner on the show just a couple of weeks ago. Yes, we did. We did. So Kishi quoted the prime minister as saying, We would like to decide on the government's policy based on a report of a government subcommittee of experts that releasing it into the sea is the most realistic option. Can't you just find someone to tell us it's a good idea? Well, you know, what is it? Uh, I think David Wagner was quoting someone and said that dilution is the best solution. (laughs) I don't know if the person who he quoted was like, you know, uh, who's that lawyer guy? Wait, which lawyer guy? 
uh, Johnny Cochran. You know? <laughs> As a scientist who likes to rhyme, I mean, you know, it's the, the Dr. <laughs> Seuss of nuclear science. That guy. Oh, God. <laughs> Dr. Nuki Fofuki. <laughs> it works. Hey, it worked with OJ, right? Um, that was, yeah. You just gotta make a rhyme and people people will uh, accept it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suga should have dropped some bars on this uh, fisheries guy. It would have yeah. fixed the problem. No, you don't get it. Dilution is the solution. Like to everything. If we don't make haste, it will be a waste. <laughs> I'd like to file a motion to dump that shit in the ocean. Oh, nice one, nice one. <laughs> So said the boss. <laughs> oh man! There's a big lever with like fuzzy dice attached to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know there are thousands of these barrels full of contaminated water. I, I've seen the pictures. It's like you you can look at it on Google Maps, right? There's just yeah. like tanks and tanks and tanks. It's terrifying. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, thankfully, they're not going to dump it all at the same time. They're going to do it one by one. Yeah. It's going to be like Noah's Ark, but with, you know, less animals and more contaminated seawater. Ew, we got to test it first. Uh, if we dump it all at the same time, uh, it could infect and uh, poison everybody in Tokyo. So we're going to dump the water two by two because this is how God told us that it has to be done. So if you put our, all, all, all the barrels into a tube, you'd have a very large tube. Uh, you wouldn't want to put it into a tube. <laughs> That's a Tim and Eric meme. <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to get paid for the news. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> Minister of Economy, Trade, and Industry Hiroshi Kajiyama told reporters... We will continue to explain the matter to those in the fishing industry. We want to reach a conclusion quickly. In February last year, the government's expert subcommittee compiled a report on the method of releasing the nuclear wastewater into the ocean. Based on this, the government had planned to hold a meeting of related cabinet members in October 2020, but it was put off due to opposition from the local fishing industry. The government had accordingly been making arrangements with related groups for the meeting to go ahead. All right, and up next, Fuji Media and 600 broadcasters subject to foreign ownership probe. The Asahi Shimbun has reported that the Ministry for Internal Affairs and Communications is launching a sweeping investigation of Fuji Media Holdings for suspected violations of foreign capital regulations under Japan's broadcasting law. Minister for Internal Affairs and Communications, Ryota Takeda, announced that he had ordered the probe at a news conference on April the 6th. Takeda said to reporters that, I have ordered officials at my ministry to conduct a thorough investigation on the Fuji Media Holdings issues. We will look into the matter and address it sufficiently. Fuji Media Holdings is suspected of breaching the rules for about two years until September 2014. The holding company owns multiple subsidiaries, including Fuji Television Network, Sendai Television, and BS Fuji. BS Fuji, I wonder what the BS stands for. Uh, it's uh, the satellite, BS satellite. Ah, uh, okay. So yes. the satellite's also BS. Yes, it's gotcha. all BS. It's all BS. Yes, there's, there's also CS. CS? There's BS and CS. Ah, okay, okay. Gotcha. And uh, our British listeners might have some opinions as to what CS stands for, but I don't think we're going to say it on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. So Fuji Media Holdings discovered through an internal investigation that it may have temporarily violated the regulations, but did not publicly announce the possible breach. In an interview with the Asahi Shimbun on April 5th, the president of Fuji Media Holdings, Osamu Kanemitsu, admitted to past errors in how the firm handled voting rights on the shareholders list and that the company suspected it had broken the rules. However, Kanemitsu said there have not been any legal problems since the end of September 2014. Fuji Media Holdings is a certified broadcast holding company under the Broadcasting Act. However, businesses cannot be certified as such 
if foreign individuals or foreign companies hold 20% or more of the firm's voting rights. According to the law, the telecommunications ministry must cancel a certification over the violations. If that occurs, the firm would be slapped with new restrictions, such as not being allowed to own subsidiaries like Fuji TV. Each subsidiary also receives its own license and certification to operate as a broadcaster in Japan. Under the law, if foreign shareholders hold 20% or more of the voting rights to a certified broadcast holding company, the firm can cancel the voting rights in excess of the limit. Fuji Media Holdings has canceled the voting rights of some of its foreign shareholders at the end of March and the end of September every year based on the law to lower its foreign capital ratio to 19.99%. So it looks like they're、uh, dancing in a very delicate area. Yes, yes. I wonder how they pick which foreign shareholders get shunted on the voting rights.、Uh, boss,、uh, we got to cut it down to 19.99. It's between Jeff Bezos and the CCP.、Uh, they both want the same percentage. <laughs> we laugh, but it's probably true. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> Bezos, what he, he bought.、Uh, What, what newspaper? Washington Post. Yeah, he bought、yeah. the Washington Post. I wouldn't be surprised if there's yeah, yeah, yeah. a small percentage. Amazon Prime Fuji. <laughs> Mr. Fukumoto, you wouldn't want to lose your Amazon Prime membership, would you? Ah, 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 anything, anything. Don't, don't, don't cut off my thumb. I need it. <laughs> yeah. And our last news story for this week deliveries of Japanese beer brewing giant Asahi's new mug cans halted over huge demand. The Mainichi has also reported that major Japanese beer firm Asahi Breweries announced April 8th it has suspended deliveries of its new beer, which comes in a can with a fully opening top for foamier drinking. After initial sales started at convenience stores two days earlier, Exceeded expectations. Have you seen this? It's been all over TV. So it's a beer can, looks like a normal beer can, but when you open the top, it、mm. doesn't just open the little hole like it normally does.、Mm -hmm. The whole top comes off. Like, come, like a can of tomatoes. That's, I, I wonder why it took them so long to、uh, do something like this. Well, actually, beer cans used to be like that. Oh, really? So it's actually sort of like a back to the old school way. But、yeah. at the same time,、uh, having the entire top come off is also somewhat of a safety hazard. I don't know how they got around that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I mean, you know, Japan can be a little bit less stringent on the whole、uh, packaging safety stuff as、uh, other countries. But. The cool thing about this can is you open it, and I think maybe they put some more CO2 or whatever in there. So you open it, and the foam actually comes up, and sometimes it'll even spill out of the can. They're all about the foam here. It's yeah, it's funny because,、uh, I mean, Gaijin Twitter was also talking about this, but they're like, uh, who wants a foamy beer?、Uh, that's kind <laughs> of、uh, not the idea. <laughs> this is a big cultural difference, right? Because we, we know being in Japan,、um, They value the foam very much. I mean, yeah, and it's,、uh, I think, I mean, I've been brainwashed by the foam, foamites. So,、oh, yeah, like, yeah. like, I'll go to America and they'll give me this beer with no foam in it. And I'm like, hey, where's my foam? Yeah. Doesn't look like a beer. This looks like, you know, what is this, flat? Put some bubbles in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty wild, the,、uh, the difference and the expectations after living here for a while to have、uh, quite a lot of foam. <laughs> it's 80 20, and if somebody says something else, then shoot them. <laughs> so, the new version of the popular Super Dry brand, which opens up to allow consumers to drink foamy draft beer like it would be in a mug, became an instant internet sensation. Asahi Breweries said sales were much higher than expected, leading to scarcity at convenience stores. With the demand exceeding supply, Asahi reportedly opted to halt deliveries. Though it isn't clear when shipments will resume, Asahi said it is preparing for the product's April 20th general launch. Cool. Well, can't wait to get my foamy beer. Uh, you know, uh, we, we talked to a, a, a foamy beer specialist about the taste of this new can, and、uh, he actually gave some comments to us. Hmm. 
Well, I got to say, this foamy bear sure is good, but, uh, I mean, if they can put beer in the can and the whole lid comes off, why can't they do that with other things? Like what? I don't know, man. Like, uh, just kind of put, you know, like, uh, spam in the can and you can, you can just kind of rip the whole thing off and eat it whole like a, like a snake. They already got those spam cans. Hot damn. Where'd you get them? No, this is really cool. Um, you know, uh, if only, if only COVID wasn't uh, monopolizing our societies, we could go outside and enjoy Hanami. And uh, that's what we need. We need someone to put the COVID shot in a can, yeah. and then we can, you know, pop the top, and we can enjoy a, a foamy uh, coronavirus vaccine. To all you scientists out there, just get it, get it in a can. <laughs> you gotta can it. You got, why is it, why didn't they can it? <laughs> can it before it's too late to save the planet. <laughs> With our powers combined. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of funny. You think about the, uh, there was that mask shortage and you had all of these companies who didn't make masks making masks. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of interesting. You don't see the same thing with the vaccine, but there's this global supply shortage. I mean, obviously making vaccines a little bit more difficult, I would imagine, than making uh, masks. But uh, yeah. I mean, you know, Coca-Cola, they've got Santa Claus and polar bears. I mean, they could figure out how to make vaccines, right? Mm. And put it in a can. They're good at that. <laughs> yeah. That, that, you know what? You know what? Um, some of our uh, more uh, scientifically knowledgeable listeners might uh, be shutting off the podcast now. But really, why can't they ask Coca-Cola to help out? <laughs> Seriously, like these, <laughs> these multinationals that have incredible, you know, supply chains to get like Amazon. Why isn't Amazon Coca-Cola... You know, well, Johnson and Johnson is already helping out, but you know, more more than more con consumer product uh, oriented companies that can that are experts at getting stuff from A to B in like less than twenty four hours. So, would you like the Pfizer vaccine, or would you like uh, Pfizer World, or would you like uh, Diet Pfizer? <laughs> it only has half of the effectiveness, but there are less calories. And coming soon, Pfizer Zero. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you immortal, right? <laughs> yeah. We don't know what the hell we put in this one. <laughs> we were kind of drunk. <laughs> All right. And coming up next on Japanese Politics Wow, we'll be talking about when is Suga going to call a snap election? You're now listening to Tokyo Wave. So roaming the halls of Nagatacho, or Japan's Capitol Hill, you will most certainly hear people trading the rumor of the day, which is, when is that snap election going to be? We're now coming on seven months into the Suga administration, and quickly approaching the inevitable conclusion of this year as the end of the four-year House of Representatives term. While the Prime Minister does not have to call a snap election, most leaders in Japan's modern history have decided to use the not-so-secret weapon of surprise election. In fact, the last time the Japan House of Representatives had a non-snap election was 1976. Wow. So either Suga's going to bring us back to disco fever or he's going to pull the ripcord soon. And I would say most pundits would agree with me that whether it's sooner or later, it's going to be a snap election versus waiting for the end of the term. Mm -mm -mm. The reasoning for this is quite simple. The ruling Liberal Democratic Party has been consistently successful. Uh, the data I remember looking at point to the LDP being the most consistently successful political party in any democratic nation in the modern era. And so they've been in power for most of the 70 plus years since the conclusion of World War II 
And every election, people speculate on how many seats they're going to get. And the answer is always either a majority or a supermajority with only two exceptions. And those were in the early 90s. And then again in 2009. And that lasted, of course, until December 2012, when the second term of Prime Minister Abe began. Right, right. And the first term of Abe was what year? That was around 2007. So it was before basically what happened. And this is something, excuse me, while I put on my politics nerd hat. How does it look, Aaron? Uh, pretty nerdy. Oh, thank you. Uh, and it, it's got a pocket protector in the brim, actually. <laughs> oh, gosh. But so it's funny to look at the statistics over the past couple of decades because up until Prime Minister Abe's second term, every politician only lasted for about a year. Mm -hmm. And what would happen is they would start out, they would have an okay, pretty high approval rating, and then immediately go down. So it's just mm -hmm. like instant free fall. Right, right. And right. then usually they'd last about a year and then they'd throw in the towel, usually under some scandal or acrimony, and they'd pass it on to the next guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so as long as the LDP had the majority, uh, the prime minister would resign and then the LDP would pick a successor and that cycle would continue. Right, right. Until an election, obviously. And so that continued to happen, but it seemed like the popularity of each new prime minister was dwindling even faster than usual. Mm -hmm. So basically, the last steady eddy prime minister before Abe was Koizumi. Mm -hmm. And Koizumi lasted until 2006 when he was succeeded by Abe, and that was his first term. Right, right, And right. so then after Abe, it was, Abe had to resign because of health issues. Then it went to Fukuda, immediately went down. Then it went to Aso, and then immediate went down. And then there was an election, and it shifted. So the LDP actually lost their majority, and the opposition coalition uh, became the top dog. And so the Democratic Party... Uh, launched its administration under the Hatoyama administration. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, if you thought the LDP was unpopular, Hatoyama really took the cake. I mean, look at that. Nose dive. That is like a it's like a line. <laughs> I feel like I'm looking at um like stock charts and the time you Everybody's bought... stock sucks. <laughs> <laughs> or it it seems awesome when it's like IPO'd. So this is like an IPO, right? Yeah, these, these are basically like like junk bonds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you buy it and everyone's like, this is awesome. And then like a couple months later, it's like everyone's selling off. So well, and if you remember, you know, the 2011 earthquake and tsunami disaster happened in the middle of the Khan administration and really caused his popularity to nosedive. And then he was succeeded by Prime Minister Noda, who suffered a similar fate. <laughs> and he was, of course, ousted at the same time as the Democratic Party lost their majority and were replaced by the LDP. Right, and that right. was in uh, November 2012. And so the Abe administration began in December 2012. And since then, we've seen a lot more stability. Yeah, Although yeah. now moving into the Suga administration, as you can see, this sort of downward uh, death spiral trend looks like it <laughs> has a possibility of continuing. Yeah, yeah, it looks like so Koizumi and Abe have had the most stability and um, popularity. Yeah, and I think, you know, to give Suga credit, I mean, you can see that big dip in Koizumi's popularity as well. Right, right. I mean, this is not unheard of. And still, Suga's popularity is still around the 40th percentile. So mm -hmm. when you look at it like that, it's not really in the, the big danger zone. But, I mean, if you look at all of the LDP and also the DPJ po politicians who did end up resigning... Once you get below like 30%, then you're fried chicken, basically. Right, right, right. <laughs> fried chicken. Not they, the delicious kind, the dead kind. They should put that on the, the graph. 
There's <laughs> just a, a picture of a drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> so the snap election. There are several signs that point to this snap election happening sooner rather than later. One thing is certain, the ruling LDP's secretary general, Toshihiro Nikai, has been raring for a snap election. My discussions with colleagues inside the outer moat generally include some grumbling about why Prime Minister Suga did not call a snap election last autumn when his administration was still in its infancy, approval ratings were high, and thus the timing was right. But what about the pandemic? So indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused lots of new realities for Japanese politics. Most of Japan's 465 House of Representatives are elected by rural districts, which have been largely safe from the health hazard of the coronavirus. Unfortunately for politicians, they have found that their risk-averse electorate is less than thrilled with the prospect of their elected representatives ferrying back and forth between home base and Tokyo, given the threat of spreading infection. Yeah, we saw this on the news, right? Like they were banned from going Yeah, back. banned from going home, basically. Yeah. And this is a big issue because Japan is still really, really analog when it comes to elections and politics. And when there are elections, the Japanese election campaign strategy, the, the model that is usually employed by politicians, is an overwhelmingly analog affair. Mm, right, right. In addition to this, internet campaigning, you know, social media, political activity, etc., is still not at the same level as major other democratic nations. Isn't there pretty high regulation, too, on how much they can actually put ads out? Well, uh, so this is actually a big point where the reality and the perception, there's a gap. You're not allowed to run social media ads or internet marketing of any sort once the election period has officially begun, mm. but until a, an election period has officially begun, it's okay to do anything, essentially, as long as it, of course, doesn't violate any other laws such as the Public Office Act. So American listeners, um, politicians in Japan are not allowed to run social media ads during an election. I mean, that should make most Americans be like, huh? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can run ads on the election day itself, but you can run ads until the election day. I imagine like election day ads from Trump. The election's been canceled. I won. <laughs> Go <Canceled>. home. <laughs> so with the situation being so analog, a pandemic is not an ideal situation for holding an election in Japan. Okay, Mr. Politics Nerd, so when's that election? The short answer is there are three key possibilities. Wow. The long answer is, well, uh, let me uh, get my pocket protector out and uh, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things, okay? So the first option is... What the tabloids are saying, of course, and this is really soon. It's May the 23rd. Mm. This one would be a surprise for everyone, several veteran politicians included. However, it would be rolling the dice as the coronavirus daily infection numbers are on the rise in Tokyo, Osaka, and other metropolitan areas. With that situation, calling a snap election in the near term will surely trigger some backlash. And this is inevitable no matter when the snap election happens. The opposition is going to call foul and say, Prime Minister Suga, you called a snap election in the middle of a pandemic. You're trying to kill us all. Yikes. Because, I mean, if you were the opposition to the LDP, of course you're going to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, of course, the LDP in response is going to say absolutely nothing. Mm, mm, mm. Because the reason why you call a snap election is so the opposition is less prepared. So the opposition, of course, is going to complain about a snap election, not because they actually care about the well-being of their electorate, but because uh, they got caught with their pants down. Right, right. <laughs> 
So what about option two? Yes. But uh, before I get to that, you know, this date, I think May the 23rd is ridiculous. Uh, I'll, I'll explain why later. But uh, it has garnered enough interest to make tabloid headlines. So I don't think we can completely ignore it. Mm, mm, mm. That said, the second option, and I'm sort of leaning towards the second option. Obviously, uh, the only person who can truly answer this question is Prime Minister Suga. And my best guess right now is that even he doesn't know exactly when he's going to hold it yet. But uh, the next option after this May date would be either late June or early July. So with the scheduled Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games set to open on July 23rd, a snap election could not logically happen too close to the opening ceremony. One date of note is July 4th, the Tokyo Metropolitan Assembly election. This date is crucial for Tokyo Governor Koike, her Tokyoite's first party, and will surely be a referendum on her administration's stringent coronavirus mitigation policies. You know, Governor Koike is in the news again as she is lobbying the central government to crack down more on the spread of the coronavirus, which of course is now in another growth trajectory after the end of our second state of emergency. So it's going to be interesting to see what the central government does in response to this, because I think the central government wants to sort of put the whole state of emergency pandemic mitigation countermeasures, the, the sort of, you know, really heavy handed stuff in the rearview mirror. But with infections on the rise, it seems that um, major metropolitan areas, particularly uh, Tokyo, of course, under the leadership of Governor Koike, uh, want the government to take a harder stance so that we will not have a resurgence of the virus, which, of course, would quickly lead to an overwhelming of the medical system. Right, right. So last year, Governor Koike proved popular among voters, so it will be Interesting to see how Tokyoites first fares this year, ironically on the same date as U.S. Independence Day. Fireworks are sold separately. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, you know, Governor Koike does love to wear like random like cosplay outfits. Yeah, yeah. She should totally dress as Uncle Sam. <laughs> that, that would make the best campaign ad ever. She could be like a used car salesman. Is Koike, she, she's got to be, you know, lying up for a prime ministership, right? You know, that's like one of the, the favorite rumors bandied about in politics circles. I think we can't totally discount it, but it does seem a lot less likely than it did in 2017 when she actually uh, started this Hope Party or Kibonoto. I remember. Mm. Do you remember that? that? I remember, yeah. That yeah. Uh, was a fantastic failure. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think the main thing, in order for Governor Koike to kind of parlay her new popularity as governor back into a national politics portfolio, I mean, being popular isn't the only thing that she has to do. She also has to get people to come in behind her to support her as the head of a political party. Mm, 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 and so in order for that to happen, there have to be politicians with seats already incumbents, actually, who would basically jump ship to whatever political party they represent now and move over to Koike's party. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the very people who are most likely to do that did that in 2017 and got their asses whooped. Oh, wow. Oh, so wow. it's a little bit more difficult than you would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, uh, come join my party. Uh, I joined your party uh, four years ago and uh, my wife divorced me and I had to take out three mortgages on my house. I actually kind of hate you. This party sucks. I'm going home. Well, it's funny because it, it was called the Hope Party, but yeah, uh, people, yeah. they, they, of course, you know, snarky people made a nickname for it. They called it Zetsubo no To, or the Party oh of Lost Hope. God, that's yes. And for you know, members who who joined that party, even leaving the LDP to join that party, 
and then lost their election as a result, it mm-hmm. really was some lost hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, once you lose your election, you go from being a member of parliament to just some dude or dudette. <laughs> So then there's that last option. And the last option is like the Earth, Wind and Fire song, September. With uh, Tokyo 2020 closing on August the 8th. And then after that, you've got the Paralympics, which last until the beginning of September. The month of September seems to be the other main option for having a snap election. Uh, Recently, Kyoto News reported that Prime Minister Suga stated he could indeed call a snap election before his term as leader of the ruling LDP ends on September 30th. So when do you think Prime Minister Suga is going to make this big decision? This one's a little bit easier to read. So on April the 25th, there are supplementary elections for the House of Councilors in Nagano and Hiroshima and also for the House of Representatives in Hokkaido. These by-elections will give Prime Minister Suga and his ruling LDP a basic idea of where their popularity actually stands. Following this logic, a good outcome equals a sooner snap election, and a less favorable outcome means it will be pushed out. Or is it the other way around? Um, this looks r- really tricky and a bit dangerous for Suga. Um, if the Olympics are held when they're supposed to be held and he waits until August, September, personally, I think he's probably going to opt for that option. If the Olympics are really going to go through, uh, I think there's a high probability we're going to get a lot more COVID, uh, cases after the Olympics, just because, uh, the sheer amount of, you know, influx of, you know, foreigners coming to Japan, whether it be athletes, whatever. Now you're sounding like a Japanese bureaucrat. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, you know, uh, my my biggest fear is, you know, Tokyo turning into the world's Petri dish, right? Uh, for the Olympics. So It's okay. We've got it in the can. <laughs> Don't worry. The can's going to come out by then. <laughs> if you look at all of this data, I mean, it's, gonna, it's a question of, okay, so before the Olympics or after the Olympics? And the Olympics... I think all the indications seem to be that the Olympics and the Paralympics are happening. It's a done deal. The torch relay is going on. You know, people are complaining about it, but it seems to be happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if we can say that the Olympics are going to happen and it's a done deal, then just the question is, okay, so before the Olympics, after the Olympics. Mm, 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 mm. Before Olympics or after Olympics. (laughs) What happens if there's no Olympics? (laughs) <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> well, I don't think, you know, I don't think the question is, are the Olympics are going to happen anymore? Yeah, I yeah. think the question should be, are the Olympics going to be seen as successful domestically? And Ooh, so that's the yeah. big question for the prime minister, because if the Olympics are going to be, you know, a slam dunk, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. the prime minister is going to look good because, you know, he's the head of the country hosting the Olympics. You know, they got to, they got to make sure to follow up with uh, what they did at the closing ceremony in Brazil when Abe dressed up as Mario. And he's just going to, he's just going to be Mario. He's just going to change his name to Mario. He's going to be like, well, I'm not prime minister anymore. So I'm a super plumber now. The way, I think the way he came uh, in the ceremony, he popped up through, you know, the Mario, the, the green pipe from the game. So like the Olympics just need to open with like a pipe that comes out and Abe shoots up through it. (laughs) I think that would be like everyone. I don't know. That that, that would help a bit. Well, I mean, now I'm going to go into super politics nerd mode. So when that came out, I actually made a meme. Oh, really? I don't make too many memes, but I thought, well, if Abe is Super Mario, then Taro also has to be Wario. Ooh, good he's one. he's sort of like the, the sort of <laughs> evil mastermind. Yeah, he's the money man too. Yeah, exactly. Is it, isn't Wario, he always has like a, all the money? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. It went viral actually. I got thousands of retweets on that. Who's uh, who's Luigi, you think? <laughs> Who is Luigi? Maybe Suga is Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah because definitely that he was luigi yeah and, and luigi's always in trouble right like yeah. luigi's mansion he's waiting for mario to come and save him so like 
<laughs> that's what that's what Prime Minister Suga's waiting for. He's waiting for Super Abe to come out of nowhere and be yeah. like, "Sorry, I was, there was a traffic jam in the pipe." <laughs> All right, about those popularity numbers, step aside. <laughs> So jokes aside, it's going to be an interesting year for Japanese politics. Uh, it's difficult to say exactly which direction it's going to go in. But of course, we do know 100% there is going to be an election sometime between now and October. Uh, I would say, you know, based on our discussion, the most likely two candidates are either June or September. Hmm. But we're going to have to see. I think this election on April the 25th is going to be a divisive one and... While the results themselves don't affect politics on the whole that much, the media reports about these elections are also going to start to shape public opinion of the political parties in anticipation of this large election that's going to happen. And uh, thanks to Aaron, now I can't get the idea of Suga as Luigi out of my head. So there's that too. <laughs> yeah. It's a me, a Suga. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> hey, listeners, that's right. You, you listener right there. Who do you think should be our next guest on Tokyo Wave? Let us know. Drop us a line at wave at tokyowave.jp. We hope you enjoyed Tokyo Wave. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Join us again next week on Tokyo Wave. 